Allah in Al Quran mentions something extremely important, and this ayah that I'm going to mention right now should have been more than enough for our sheikhs, scholars, and all these kind of people that claim that the messenger was given revelation about the future of what's going to happen to Abu Bakr, Omar, and all these kind of companions. But it's just what's going to happen to them, and this is a pure lie. But who cares about what the Quran says anyway? So, because the Quran is completely ignored. Well, one day the Messenger Salah was approached by some people in his time, of course, and he was asked about who would enter Jannah and who wouldn't. And since the Messenger cannot open his mouth freely with anything, the only thing that he conveys about Islam is the Quran. That's it. And then after that, he goes back to this uh, to his humanity. But when he talks about what Allah says. It is a Quran, and that's why a lot of times you hear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say "Qul," because that's how they know this is a revelation. So, when the messenger is asked about something in regards to the religion of Allah, he never, ever answers. He always waits for Allah to answer, which we should do today. Is we should always go back to the Quran. So, this bunch of people go to the Rasulullah and ask him about uh, what is going to happen to us. Who is guaranteed? We believe in you. Are we going to go to Jannah? Things like that, right? Well, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Answers them, and before I give you the answer that Allah has eternalized in the Quran, I want to say this: Al Islam is the religion of Allah. Al Islam is the religion of Allah. Al Quran is the book of Allah. The last day of the, the the last day of the day of judgment, that day belongs to Allah. Nothing of whatever is religious belongs to. Any other messengers, and today by saying that the messenger could regulate and he is issuing this fatwa and that and this is halal and this is sunnah, all these are acts of shirk. We associate the messenger of Allah with giving him the same authority as that we have given to Allah, and there is a big example here: is who's going to go to paradise and who doesn't go. Okay. Now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala answers back to these people that went to the messenger, and He says, "Qul ma kuntu bid'an min al-Rasul." Answer them, Ya Muhammad. Tell them, I am not the first messenger ever sent. I e before me there were other people, and they brought to you the same message. Wa ma adri ma yufalu bi wala bikum. And when they asked him about paradise and if they go and when they go things like that, the answer was clear. I do not know what will happen to me or to you. Subhanallah. The messenger says it openly in the Quran that he does not know what it is that's going to be done. Unto him or to any of his companions, and then Allah explains to them kindly and nicely the mission and the job of this man. In Tabi'u illa ma yuha ili, I only follow that which is revealed to me. Wa ma ana illa nadir al mubin, and I am only sent with a clear warning that is the Quran. Okay, and this is an al-Ahqaf. This is the surah number forty-six, and the ayah is number nine. To to just summarize the thing, is this into four small points? Number one, the messenger of Allah is not the first messenger to come with a message from Allah. Two, he does not know what will happen to him or to his followers. So saying that Abu Bakr will enter paradise without Hisab and Omar and Ali and Uthman and this and that is a pure lie. Because if I believe in a hadith, I don't need the Quran anymore because the Quran is a liar. Because the Quran says that the messenger and his followers know nothing, and especially the messenger who receives the guidance from Allah gets nothing from Allah, not a thing. So it's either I believe in the hadith. Hadith or the Quran, and what have we done? We completely ignore the Quran and follow the Hadith until today. And you will find Muslims that will that will fight you to death over that Abu Bakr will enter to Jannah, and they will even tell you that you're kafir because you don't believe in this when the whole thing is nothing but a hoax. And number four, and the job of the messenger is to act on the Quran. He doesn't. He doesn't have a sunnah of himself. Okay, the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad is not a seller of paradise tickets to people. Okay, Jannah is entered only with actions, and actions have not been weighed as yet. And as such, 
all those people that have been good at the time of their death, when the angels come to collect their souls, the angels will produce or will give them some comfort. So if you are a good person, you will receive this comfort at the time of death, in your de- deathbed. And they will tell you, Salamun alaykum. Salam alaykum. They don't say assalamu alaykum. They will tell you words of comfort and words of a good promise. And then the, on the day of judgment, the angels will tell you that Allah will tell you, Udhulu jannata bima kuntum ta'amalun. Enter the garden, i.e., the jannah, as a reward for what you used to do. The messenger himself was going to go or was going uh, to go through difficult times. Were it not that Allah forgave his sins. You see, the Prophet Muhammad is described to us as this angelic kid from the time he was in the uh, womb of his mother until he dies, right? Absolutely not. The Quran tells us, you see, when you look at the Prophet Muhammad in the Quran, and the books of man, you have two different types of people. The Prophet the Muhammad of the Quran is, or the messenger that is Muhammad in the Quran, Muhammad is a sinner. He has sinned before he became a prophet and after he was a prophet. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran, in Surah Al-Fatih, he tells, and this is for Surah number 48, Allah tells the messenger, Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. Indeed, we have granted you a clear triumph. What is that clear triumph, ya Allah? لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ So that Allah may forgive you your past sins and that which is to come. What Allah is telling me, Muhammad, you have sinned in your life before this ayah, you did sin. And after this ayah, you will sin. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your uh, sins. Do you know why? Because they all are minor sins. And Allah has promised in the Quran that anyone who does minor sins, Allah will forgive their sins. You see, they tell us that we, Abu Bakr will enter Jannah without any accountability. And this is absolutely rubbish. Because on Judgment Day, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us all, the entirety of humanity from Adam alayhi salam until the last man to exist. And when it comes to the prophets and messengers from Adam alayhi salam to our prophet Muhammad, all without any exception, we all will be held accountable for our actions and our actions will be weighed on, on judgment day and then our fate shall be decided on that uh, fact. Okay, I know this piece of information will surprise you, but this is Allah's Islam, not the man-made hadithic Islam. Allah says in the Quran, you see, the Prophet Muhammad, he will come to Allah on judgment day and he will be questioned. Adam would the same thing, take any Prophet. Allah says in the Quran, We shall certainly question those to whom messengers were sent, i.e. us and any other people to whom Allah sent messengers. And then Allah says, And we will surely question the messengers. And this is in Surah number 7, the Ayah number 6. Guarantee of Jannah to humans is a hoax. It's impossible. So why is it, well, how did the whole story come about? Well, after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu there have been a lot of conflicts, political conflicts. Many people did not accept the leadership of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and also Omar. And these people, not the Shia, not the Shia were not born at that time as yet, but the majority of people who did not accept Abu Bakr as a leader were the Ansar, the dwellers of al Madina. And there has been a big dispute between them and they did not like it that the Quraysh came from Mecca to them and then they took everything and the Ansar got absolutely nothing. So now after that, and then came Omar and Uthman and Ali, as, as you can see, there is a pattern. That pattern is, it's only people from Mecca that rule. 
later on in the third century, over 300 years or 200 years later, when the Abbasian, the dynasty of Abbasian came to power, they needed something to justify their doings. And then the scholars started making up this kind of hadiths and people and all that kind of stuff to make sure that Abu Bakr, so that no one questions the leadership or the, the choice of Abu Bakr. And always remember, Abu Bakr was not elected. Abu Bakr, oh, the, okay, I will stop here again and I go to the third part, inshallah, to end this talk. Assalamu alaikum.